Well, good afternoon, everybody. Just wanted to welcome you to our third Lunch and Learn with Dr. Albanese. Uh, this is the second part of the session we had three weeks ago uh, where he scared you, and now he's going to go ahead and make everybody feel better. So uh, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Albanese. Thank you. Okay. Is that, am I okay here? All right. Well, welcome. A um, couple of, I see, a, well, quite a few familiar faces, and I'm going to lower this down a little bit here. <laughs> I'm one of five kids, so I'm used to being very loud, come from this Italian family. Um, well, anybody not here last time? Okay. Yes. Well, last time, what we, the reason why we break this up into two parts, I'll give you a little background as to why I'm even here. Um, oftentimes in the office, right around this time through the middle of January, everybody's lives change, okay, pretty much every year. And they change in the same way every year. So I'd get very similar questions every year. Uh, I want to lose weight, I want to exercise, uh, everything's going to change. So people would oftentimes come to me and say, okay, you know, I've changed my diet. This is what I'm eating, I'm eating this and that, which was great. They were making changes that they certainly thought were positive and we're going to help them reach a goal that they had set for themselves. And oftentimes, the changes they made, although they were seen as positive, they were most times sabotaging their efforts to actually reach their goal. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, I gave the example last time of Yoplait, thick and creamy, uh, key lime pie yogurt. 100 calories, zero fat. Pretty good if you want to get in shape, stay in shape, lose weight, things like that, right? But I actually showed last time that there were actually about 30% fat calories in there that you'll never read on the label because of the ingredients. See, high fructose corn syrup was in there. Then you had other things to make it taste better because you take the fat out, you have to make it taste better. So in an effort to uh, do something healthy, people might buy this product. In an effort to be healthier, they were actually buying that product, eating that product, and sabotaging their efforts to be healthier because of all the stuff in that product. So, in saying that, I know everyone that came last time was here saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, with everything I said. Um, but today, you know, last time was very important for me to explain what's in foods. Because it's not only how you eat, it's what you eat and what's in the foods. If you understand that, then your choices, uh, you know, anything you have in your cupboard is going to be fine to eat. Because you're going to buy the right foods, if you will. Healthy foods, truly healthy, not just labeled healthy. So today, we kind of broke you down last time, I felt. Now we're going to build you back up. We're going to explain how to put together a healthy diet. And we're going to do that by a couple things. We have whole foods, so the foods you eat. okay. And then there are supplements. Things that you're going to supplement your diet with to make up for any vitamins, minerals, things like that that you may be lacking. Um, I'm also going to show you how you can derive a lot of fruits and vegetables from supplements as well. My goal is to make things cost effective and to make it easy. Okay, I have three kids, yes. I have three kids. So, you know, in our family, everything's gotta be fast. You know, everything has to be very efficient. But also, the cost effectiveness. People would oftentimes say when they would ask me questions about diet and nutrition, well, you know, I know I probably should eat all this organic food, but I can't, you know, that's expensive. In that packet, in the back, which we'll go over, we have a four-page spreadsheet of all the brand name items that a lot of people buy. And then we have three columns at uh, Whole Foods, at Ucro or Martin's, and uh, at Kroger. And showing you that brand name item, the first one is Cheerios. What are the healthy alternatives to Cheerios? The things that look like Cheerios that your kids might think are Cheerios, but are actually truly healthy. And then next, we also price them all out. We went through each store with a clipboard. And it was right around the time that U-Crops was changing over to Martin's, so everyone thought we were from Martin's. <laughs> um, because oftentimes people think it's, so, it's more expensive to buy organic food or healthy, truly healthy food. And we've proven that it's not. And I know it's not because uh, you know, that's the kind of food I buy. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So before we start, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the foods we eat. And I touched on this last time, uh, but to share this information with some of the folks that might not have been here last time, uh, you know Arby's now went with all, all organic meat? Yes, I had a patient who brought a brochure in. 
I always look what people eat when I do this talk. So if you're not eating healthy, you got to push it behind the person in front of you. Yeah, they actually went to all organic meat. I had a patient who brought a brochure in um, about meats and how uh, they fatten up the steers and, and things like that. Uh, I won't get into it because people are eating. But it's very interesting. But Arby's, they handed it out at Arby's because they wanted to show people why they made the choice to uh, change to go organic. So good choice there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. well, that's okay. So to kind of fill you in on, on why we're talking about this topic, um, everyone wants to be healthy, okay? Everybody wants to be healthy. When I always ask, well, what, what do we need to do to be healthy? There are always the two E's, exercise and eat, okay? Those are the things that people think about in terms of getting healthier. So nutrition is a big part of your overall health. The building blocks for every organ, muscle, and tissue in your body comes from what you put in your mouth. So if you're making good choices, you're going to break that food down, and the cells and tissues that make up your heart are going to come from the apple. They're going to come from the Twinkie. They're going to come from the banana. So it depends on uh, the choices you make in terms of how healthy you have the ability to be. Because when you break down that apple, your heart is made up of the cells and tissues of an apple. If you break the Twinkie down, your heart is made up of the cells and tissues of that Twinkie. One of the reasons why we have chronic conditions, chronic diseases, is people make the same choices over and over again. It was interesting, I was talking to a woman who said, um, you know, she's having these different health concerns, some stomach issues and things like that, and it was hereditary. Her heartburn was hereditary. And I thought that was interesting because she was telling me how her mom and her dad have heartburn and her sister have heartburn. And I said, so, you know, in your package when you were born, you came with heartburn genes. You know, you, your mom formulated these genes of heartburn and passed them down to you. And she kind of thought about it differently for a second. She goes, well, you know, I, everybody in my family has it. It has to be genes. I said, well, what if I were to tell you that your genes are, they're like a blank slate. Now, you can activate a gene by giving it the environment to be activated. It has potential. That's all a gene has. It's potential. It has the potential to be healthy, unhealthy. And in the case of heartburn, it's not going to be hereditary. But I asked her, I said, well, let me ask you this. Do you all live basically the same lifestyle and, and things like that? And I had met her mom and her sister, so I kind of knew already the answer to that question. And I said, do you think it could be that the lifestyle that you live is very similar to your mom and your sister? Because what you do, what your sister does, is probably in great part due to what you learned growing up, almost like being conditioned. This is what we do. Why? Well, I don't know. That's what we've been taught. That's what we've been around. And I started talking to her a little bit more, but as we you know, talked about this, we, she realized that, well, it probably wasn't genes. It was her lifestyle. And I, I mentioned that last time. I'll just touch on it real briefly for the folks that weren't here, because I think it's an important uh, concept to understand. Most people think we have health problems because of genes, germs, things like this. But why is it some people get sick in the family and other people don't? You live in the same family, you eat the same foods, same basic lifestyle. See, it's the potential we give our body. Our genes haven't changed in about 10,000 years. Okay, when you talk to geneticists or read reports uh, and research, our genes haven't changed. What has changed is our lifestyle. When you look at people, say, even a few hundred years ago, okay, they were eating organic food. It was organic because we didn't spray it with pesticides, herbicides. We didn't put uh, steroids and, and vaccines into our cows and our meats. Okay? Um, the article in, from Arby's, they would feed uh, cows and steers bubblegum in the wrapper because it increased the appetite of the animal. So not only are we uh, you know, uh, doing this to our foods and, and, our, and our, uh, you know, our fields, that is causing us to have a very different environment within our body. So years ago, it was all organic. They grew the food, they took it out of the ground off a tree or you know, something that walked along the ground. But what we do now is very different because we want to make sure our food lasts a long time. It was interesting, my, parent, my mother and father-in-law came down, that was about a month ago, and you know, they brought Thomas's English muffins. Well, we buy English muffins from Whole Foods. And if you uh, buy whole food from Whole Foods, you'll know that uh, the breads, any meat, they pretty much go bad. And the breads, you'll see the green mold starting in about five days. Well, it was interesting because they came down and we had a thing of English muffins from Whole Foods and the Thomas's English muffins. And after they left, we still had some left, we ate all the ones from Whole Foods and theirs was still here. In fact, we still have one and it's been about three weeks to a month and it's still fine. 
So I wonder why is that one not turning green and the one from Whole Foods turning green? See, so our genes haven't changed, but when I put certain foods in our, in our when we put certain foods in our body, it changes our environment. It gives us the potential to be healthy or unhealthy. Now, you know, we talk about chronic stress. We live in a world where stress is not something that happens and then it stops. We live in stressful lives. We have stressful jobs, not here, but other places. You know, but then again, we eat stressful foods because stress isn't just here. It's what we put in our body. So if you stress your body long enough, this machine will break down. It will not work efficiently. You know, our genes are designed to uh, replicate and thrive up to about 120 some years. But our life expectancy in the United States is 77.6 years old. In the next 40 years, by the middle part of the century, it's expected to decrease by five years. And when you look at the causes of death, we have heart disease, cancer, death from properly prescribed medication, uh, lung disease, strokes, diabetes, homicides, suicides, accidents. These are the top 10 causes of death. And they are predominantly all lifestyle related. American Cancer Institute says that conservatively from their numbers, they estimate about 60% of the cancers are preventable if changes in lifestyle were made. About 90% of the heart diseases are preventable. Those things a lot of times come about by the food we eat. People often say, well, cancer, how can cancer, you know, over 60% be preventable? It's the environment within our body. Now, touch on that first. Ever hear of pH? This is something to be aware of. We uh, email Jay pH charts. If you want them, you can talk to Jay, okay? It's about six or seven pages. pH is something to be very uh, aware of in terms of your diet and food. This is the chart. You actually, you can write the, write the website down too. Um, so Jay doesn't have in, in, get inundated with uh, emails. Essenceoflife.com. E-S-S-E-N-S-E of life.com. Okay. On there it'll have a, a little thing you click on for pH. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, pH is something to be very uh, aware of in terms of your diet. pH is like you go into a pool and there's a lot of algae. Okay. If you change the environment in the pool, it kills off the algae. Okay. Or if you keep a proper balance of chemicals in the pool, you never get algae. Same thing happens in our body. Not with algae, but the potential to be healthy or sick. I'll give you an example. Uh, cancer. Cancer only grows, <coughs> excuse me, if the pH is very low. So you have a pH of 0 to 7. That's acidic. In an acidic environment, it's also an anaerobic environment. Okay? Oxygen is not needed in that environment for certain things to grow and thrive. 7 is neutral. 7 to 14 is alkaline, very high pH. Now, what grows in a very acidic, anaerobic environment? Cancer cells. We all have about 4,000 plus cancer cells in our body at any given time. Why is it cancer manifest in some people and not others? Certainly there are a lot of factors. pH is a huge one. When people have cancer um, and they want to radically change their life, one of the first things they do is they change their diet. You know, they cut out meats, they cut out all this. They almost become pure vegetarians. You know, if you've ever talked to people who radically change their diet on cancer, they cut out a lot of those foods. Why is that? Because it changes their pH. They change the environment that cancer can no longer thrive. Now, other factors are involved, but cancer cells only grow in an anaerobic environment. So if you can create an aerobic environment, a higher pH in your diet, by just changing the food you eat or the balance of foods, you actually decrease your chance of having cancer. It's a fact. Arthritis, uh, colds, viruses, things like that. When you eat healthier, you're less prone to those conditions. Why is that the pH? Okay, the chemistry of your body. So on this list is, uh, yes? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It has the ability to be clear. Obviously there's always gonna be other variants, but one of the things I always think is interesting with kids, you can change so many of their health conditions. You know, I take care of a lot of children, ADD, ear infections, um, allergies, things like this. And if you can detoxify their system, okay, diet one, you know, we adjust them. But if you change that, you change their whole expression of health. And that's outwardly visible in 
their appearance. Yeah, so that can have a direct effect on acne. Um, any type of viruses and things like that only thrive in an anaerobic environment. So one of the things you look at in this chart, it has a list of foods, A to Z. And then it breaks it down from highly acidic, moderately, mildly acidic. Highly uh, alkaline, which is a high pH, moderate and mild. Okay. And what you have to look at is not necessarily the food, but when the food is broken down, what is left. Lemon is one of the highest alkaline foods. We would think it's acidic, but it's not because when it's broken down, you're left with the end result of that lemon. That's alkaline. So when people have indigestion, upset stomach, ulcers, I recommend in the office they put lemon in their water. I always drink lemon in my water. People think I have dirty water. It's actually lemon floating around in there. Lemon is a natural detoxifier. It's a cleansing agent, but it also helps to uh, bring about uh, less acidity in the stomach. So it's when the food is broken down. Now, a couple things that I'll, I'll recommend right off the bat. I drink this drink every morning. Okay, I make it in the evening. It's very simple. It's a glass of water, 10, 12 ounces of water. I squeeze a half a lemon in there. Aloe vera gel. Okay, you have lotion. This case soothes your skin. Gel does the same thing inside your whole GI tract. Incredibly healthy. Okay, I put a tablespoon of aloe vera gel and a drop or two of honey. And there are different reasons why I put the honey in there. Um, but that's the drink I drink in the morning. I make it at night, put it in the, free, in the refrigerator, mix it up, and I drink it in the morning. I don't drink coffee, so that's my coffee. Okay. Aloe vera gel has a very high pH. The lemon has a high pH. So it's a natural cleansing agent, natural detoxifier, but it's also very soothing for your entire GI tract. Folks that have constipation, a um, little backed up and things like that. Aloe vera gel, very healthy, makes everything, it kind of lubricates your GI tract. So you're, give you a, a reason why. Your GI tract is lined with mucus, okay? It uh, protects the lining of the, the inner lining of your GI tract. Well, if there's any irritation along your GI tract, if you have a bad cough, okay, your body's trying to get rid of things, it'll shed some of that mucus because the mucus like captures things and then you get rid of that along with the mucus. So the aloe vera gel helps to act as a protective layer. Okay, so it's a very healthy uh, substance to drink. Um, so aloe vera gel is something I drink every day and helps my pH, but it's also very healthy for your GI tract. Okay. Um, where do you find that? A secret location. You can buy it mostly at uh, like health food type stores. A vitamin shop, um, Whole Foods will have it, Trader Joe's. I haven't been in the Martins to look around enough, but I know Ucrops used to carry it. I know they've changed a little bit, but they used to, in their natural food section, they used to have it there. Um, don't know about Food Lion. Do you know Food Lion or Kroger? Uh, Kroger, hit or miss, sometimes they have it. Um, a thing that's probably about this, this tall, um, you know, about this wide, uh, it's about fifteen, sixteen dollars, and it'll last you a few months. So it's very. In yes, but you don't want to eat that. There's lotion, there's gel and juice. The gel, the gel. Well, yeah, but it might. Yeah, and I bought that. The gel, not edible. No, you make sure it says edible on it. Okay. No, a whole a lily of the garden is a good brand. No, I know what you mean, though. They have the lotion and the gel, but that's not uh, edible. It actually is, you know, yeah. But the juice and the gel, um, it's going to be in the food section. Um, don't get the juice, get the gel, because the gel kind of sticks, and it's a little better, okay? So, uh, tablespoon. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of gels together. Because when you put it in and it's, I mean, I've had it, I, you know, I drink it sometimes if I forget at night, but then you have like the lemon, it's kind of filtered through the water and the aloe vera gel that's kind of clumps. So it just breaks it up. Half a lemon, not lemon juice, whole lemon. Half a lemon, yes. Whole food lemon, drop or two of honey. The honey, what it does, I'll tell you real quick, this is why it's very good to drink in the morning. I've, you know, I've had it all throughout the day. But the honey, you have a reflex. In the morning, you're sleeping, you open your eyes, the light hits your eyes, it causes a reflex to your brain. It says, hey brain, tell the liver to start producing glucose. Glucose, uh, or not producing, take glucose from your liver and start distributing it through your body. But it, glucose is a, um, it's like kindling wood. It starts the fire, it's quick energy. So your brain needs a lot of energy to get this machine going. So that's what the honey does. 
The honey is a fast form of sugar, so it takes a little bit of pressure off the liver to uh, you know, get all the stores of, liver, uh, of uh, glucose throughout the body. That's all the honey does. You only need a little bit of that. Okay? That's the reason for the honey. Um, so Now, something else that's really good to change your pH okay, is baking soda. Baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. It's very alkaline. I'll take, and this is great if you have colds, uh, feeling run down, just like, oh, I'm not feeling really good, or I'm getting a little cold. A half a teaspoon of baking soda in a little bit of juice, apple juice, whatever it is, something with a little flavor, because if you drink it with water, which I've done, uh, all it's very salty. You know, so about the size of a shot. You drink it real quick. What it does, it shocks your body. Brings you into a very alkaline state. If you have a cold, uh, feeling run down, two or three times a day for the better part of a week, and it'll knock that right out of your system. But it's also very good for your pH because it has a very high pH. So folks with indigestion, upset stomach, ulcers, things like that, reflux, aloe, uh, aloe vera gel and the baking soda. Very healthy, very healthy. Now, how do you know where your pH is? An easy way to do this is to go to Vitamin Shop. Uh, I'm sure some of the uh, pharmacies, you know, CVS, things like that have it, but I know Vitamin Shop does. And you can buy litmus paper, 100 sheets for probably 6 $7. You put it under your tongue, you test it first thing in the morning, right before you go to bed, and you get a range, okay? And it'll tell you where your pH is. You want to be just slightly over 7, okay? Slightly alkaline. Okay. Over 7 is neutral, so you want to be just over 7, like 7.5, uh, right in that range. <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah. That's why you don't want to be 14. Like if a little alkaline is good, a lot is really good. No, you want to be right, or, right over neutral. Litmus paper. Mm -hmm. The litmus paper, you can also buy the UA strips, which is the best way to test it, but the litmus paper is very effective and it's a lot easier. Okay, so that will tell you kind of where is your body, what kind of chemistry do you have inside. And if you can create a little bit more uh, alkalinity, that's healthier. Now you'll always be up and down, but you want an average, okay? That's one of the first things you can do. Now when you look at this chart, you'll see the foods and the drinks and the candy and all the, what's alkaline, what's acidic. I don't see any soda drinkers, so that's good, unless they're concealing it in their drink cups. Um, give you an idea, battery acid has an acidity or a pH of 2.5, okay? Soda, Classic Coke has a pH of 2.5. You put soda on your battery if it's corroded to kill the corrosion. You put soda in a glass and you drink it. Hmm. Okay. Low pH. Uh, these are things to be aware of. Okay. Coffee. I know that's like holy ground, especially now with Starbucks and all. I've tried it twice. I never liked it, so I can. But be aware of the coffee too. You know, if you're a big coffee drinker throughout the day. I always ask people why you drink coffee. Some people say, oh, it gets me jump-started in the morning. I say, well, go to sleep earlier. You don't need a jump-start. But I know some people, my wife included, she likes the taste of, you know, she buys this, I don't even know what it is, but some kind of soy mocha latte thing. She likes the taste of it, okay? But she's very aware of her pH, okay? So be aware of the foods you eat. Now, it's not that you're never going to eat acidic foods, okay? You have a hamburger. Okay, so balance it out with a salad. Okay, but if you're eating hamburgers every day, all day, that's going to create acidity. So you're never going to eat one way or the other. You're always going to have a balance. Okay, but just be aware of where you are. Very important. Very, very important. Okay, any questions on that? And that's something easy to do. Yes, yes, yeah, just like Diane mentioned, uh, can it be too high? You want to be right around 7, just over 7. You know, uh, from 7 to 14 is very alkaline. You don't want to be... 14. You want to be just over 7, 7.5, 7 right in that range. Tea is a better choice, like green tea, yes, yes. It's right on the website and it'll have a little uh, thing you click on there, it says pH of foods. And it's probably about 7, 8, 9, 10 pages, something like that. It'll have a whole list of the pH of foods. 
and it'll go down into certain types of foods, raw foods like fruits and vegetables, candies and oils and uh, you know, it's a very comprehensive list. Really important to watch that. Okay, any other questions with that? Okay, so we talked a little bit about uh, chemistry and, and you know, where our bodies should be. Now let's talk about filling our bodies, okay? And this is what everybody wants to hear. So let's talk about, a lot of people uh, are concerned about calories. How much food do I eat? How much food do I need? We have point systems, we have zones, we have all these different diets. My thing is if you can create a healthy diet, you don't have to go on a diet, you don't have to worry about your points and all this stuff. So, on the, and this is why we uh, handed these out in the beginning, about the third page uh, on the top it says <coughs> determining your daily calorie needs, okay? This is um, one method, it's called the Harris-Benedict equation for figuring out how many calories you need. Now before I start, let me just preface this by saying, as far as counting calories, it's great to do for about a week. A weekend, the week, and the next weekend. So you get an idea, okay? After that, you're not gonna count calories, okay? You're not, it, it's, it's just, it's not the easiest thing to do and, and it's very time consuming and um, it's just not easy to do. But if you get an idea over the course of a week, for pretty much we're creatures of habit, we're gonna do this, eat the same or similar foods all the time, you'll get an idea. Where am I? Am I eating too much protein, too much carbohydrates? Am I not eating enough? Uh, what most women will find, you eat a lot more carbohydrates, not enough protein, and you eat too few calories. Men will have a tendency to eat more proteins, not as much carbohydrates. Okay? So this is the Harris-Benedict equation. So first you have to figure out how many calories does my body need to just lay there in bed without moving for this vehicle to run, this machine to run. That's called your basal metabolic rate. That's the first thing you figure out. There's a formula. And I know when the women look at this, they see the first number 655, and for the men, it's 68 or 66. It's not a mistake. It's just the factors that are involved. Okay? But you figure out what your basal metabolic rate by putting in some information with regards to your height, your age, uh, your weight. Okay? That'll give you the amount of calories that you need to just survive. Okay? Now you have to factor in your exercise level. How much uh, energy is your body uh, doing on a daily basis? So if you are very active, you're going to need more calories. If you're very sedentary, you don't need as many calories. So then the second part of this is to take that number and then you multiply it times a factor of 1.2 to 1.9 based on the amount of exercise and, uh, and the type of exercise you do. If you're sedentary, just light exercise, moderate exercise, very uh, strenuous exercise. Okay? That will give you the amount of calories you need uh, in light of the exercise that you're, that you're doing. Now, if you want to gain weight or lose weight, you increase or decrease your calories by 500, okay? It's not a random number, it's a number significant enough to cause a physiological change in your body. And then you have to redo the calories, okay? Now, after you do this, if you decide to count calories for a week, then you can very easily determine how much food you need by looking at your palm of your hand. Your hand, not your husband's hand, okay? So, your hand is here. It's about how many, the, the quantity of carbohydrates, the quantity of proteins that you need. Okay, I don't worry too much about fat because if you're eating healthy foods, you're not, you need fat, you need cholesterol, you need all these things, but you're going to have it in a healthy manner, in a healthy amount. So that's an easy way to determine, okay, about that much of a serving at each meal, okay. You don't really need a lot because we're going to put together a diet and you'll understand why. Now, one thing that you have to write in on this, that's going to give you the number of calories you need per day. Now we have to translate that into grams because that's what you're going to read on the labels. So say, for example, we'll just do round numbers. Say you need 1,000 calories a day. Now, just put down protein, carbohydrates, and fats, okay? So for proteins, carbohydrates, and fat, we have to translate that to grams. For the uh, proteins, anywhere between 35 to 45% should be uh, your, your protein intake. About 45 to 55% uh, thereabouts, carbohydrates, okay? And about 15% fats. Okay, and there's different percentages and things like that. I'm just going to give you an average. So you have 1,000 calories. Multiply that, say, times 35% for proteins, 55% uh, for carbohydrates, and 15% for fats. Okay? So you get your percentage. Now, for proteins and carbohydrates, you divide that number by 4. That gives you the number of grams. Divide that number by the fats. 
that number, the percentage you get, divide that by nine, and that gives you the amount of grams of fats that you need per day. Okay. Anybody need me to repeat that? Yeah. Okay, so a, th a thousand calories. Okay, we're going to figure out protein using 35%, just round numbers. So a thousand times 35% gives you 350 calories. You take that 350, divide it by four, and that gives you the number of grams you need per day in protein. Okay. And the same thing for carbohydrates. So we'll take 55%, so that's 550 uh, calories, divided by four, and that gives you the number of grams of carbohydrates. Now it's based on 1,000 calories, okay? 1,000 calories, say 15% fat. So multiply 1,000 times 15%, gives you 150 calories, divide that by nine. That gives you the number of grams of fat. Like I said, it, like for me, I don't worry, I don't, I don't even look at fat. It, you know, everyone gets caught up in fat. Fat is healthy. Cholesterol is healthy. Your body doesn't produce anything that's not healthy, that, that you don't require. Right? We think cholesterol is bad. You need cholesterol. You need fats, good fats, healthy fats. You know, if you don't have any fat in your diet, your brain doesn't function. Okay? So that's why I really don't look at, and when we talk about a healthy diet, you know, once you, you formulate a healthy diet, you don't have to worry about all this stuff. But right now, it's good just to get an idea of, well, where am I right now? Gives you a benchmark. Okay? Anybody have questions there? Okay. So that's, that's the starting point. Now, how do you eat this much food? You eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The problem is we eat those meals in reverse of how we should eat them because we have uh, a piece of toast and maybe uh, you know, a breakfast bar with a cup of coffee on the way to work as you're driving. Right? Then for lunch, we may stop, oh, it's 12 o'clock, I'll stop and eat lunch, I'll just bring it to my desk, I'll have a quick little sandwich or maybe some little things on the side. And then for dinner, you're famished because you haven't eaten all day, and you go home and eat this big meal. Then after dinner, you're still hungry, so you have a big bowl of ice cream. Okay. Right. So that's how we eat. We should flip it around. You eat like a queen or a king, prince or a princess, and a pauper for dinner. Okay. Because when you wake up in the morning, you all know breakfast, breaking the fast of not eating all night. So when do you consume, when do you, when does your body need the most energy? During the day or when you're sleeping? During the day. So that's when you need to consume the most amount of food. Your metabolism in great part is uh, dependent on what you eat in the morning. You eat a great healthy meal, you know, pretty decent sized breakfast, it'll actually increase your metabolism. Especially if you exercise in the morning, even better. So for breakfast, that's when you want to eat your biggest meal. Okay. Now, your body has cycles. And I'll give you, a, everyone is a little different, but first thing in the morning till mid-afternoon, you should take in the most amount of food. Mid-afternoon to sometime around early evening, that's when your body starts to break it down. Then from early evening through the next morning, your body gets rid of it. Okay. That's why we, a lot of times you go to the bathroom when you get up in the morning. Okay, that's your cycle. So when we eat big meals at night, you're actually throwing your whole body cycle off. That's why if you've ever um, changed your hours and you know you stay up really late, or you know you're on vacation, you stay up late, you eat late, your whole body's thrown off. You just don't feel right because your body has natural cycles. So in the morning is the best time to eat fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. Morning, early afternoon, best time to eat fresh fruit because you need that energy. It gives you a great source of sugars. Okay? And it gives you a lot of energy real quick. Vegetables mixed in through um, late morning, early afternoon, into the evening is a great time to eat vegetables. Okay? Like every, to make it simple, I said I make it simple and I make it cost effective. What I do, I go to the store and I'll buy a pineapple, uh, I'll just name a bunch of fruits, especially in the summer, you know, melons, things like this, grapes, strawberries, and I clean them all off, which we'll talk about, and then I cut them all up and I put them in jars. So in the morning, all I need to do is just grab the jars, throw them on the kids' plates, and they eat fruit all the time in the morning. And when they go to lunch, just take the apples, the pieces, throw them in the bags. Right? So it's very easy. Like I have a bowl of oatmeal every morning. I put just a little bit of um, cottage cheese in there okay, for a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat. And I put, today I had strawberries, blueberries, bananas, and a little bit of pineapple. Right? 
and that's my predominantly my breakfast and I have a little protein shake too but it's quick and it's easy cost effective okay so look at what you're eating in the morning um, you know everyone looks at I was talking to a fellow the other day about cereal because well you have to have some kind of fiber and stuff like that you get that from the fruits right from a natural source best source of food is a whole food fruits vegetables things like that okay so then for lunch now you want to start integrating some vegetables okay so a great thing to do big salads throw in there some chicken some salmon uh, some whole foods uh, I do the same thing with my vegetables as I do with my fruit I buy a, an array of color green peppers yellow peppers red peppers uh, squash zucchini and I just cut it all up put it in the cans or in the glass containers and I take it out throw it in my salad I'm a creature of habit I have a salad every day and I have little I have grasses in there and all this stuff the important thing is what you put on your salad too because you can make a great salad and then just put this creamy stuff all over it <laughs> right I like for me I use oil and vinegar sometimes I'll just squeeze lemon on there because if you're eating all the fruits and veg or the vegetables and all you're getting a lot of flavor you don't need to flavor it with you know all the salad dressings um, nuts cranberries you know throw those types of things in your salad really it's an easy way to uh, get your fruits and vegetables in uh, especially your vegetables and then your whole foods okay yes <clears throat> yep they're allowed to buy their lunch on Friday and then I pack their lunch the other days what I do is I make sure they have fruit so uh, I'll cut up strawberries uh, grapes they'll have apples or pears uh, those are like the easiest things for them to eat at school so they'll have stuff like that uh, <clears throat> and then I'll always put in there like a yogurt they have the squeezable they buy the stony field stony field or stony field uh, yogurts um, they'll have one of those and then um, I'm trying to get them, and I'll talk, uh, since you mentioned, I'll talk about this now. One of the ways to, uh, to supplement all the fruits and vegetables that we should eat, because most people are like, how am I going to eat like five and six meals a day? What I do, I make it simple. I buy this little container, okay, and it's called um, Very Green. I buy another container, it's called Superfoods. I get the Very, is it Very Green or Truly Green? Very Green. I get a uh, Trader Joe's. It's $9 a month. Okay. I take a tablespoon and I put it in the water, stir it up, and I drink it. You can put it in apple juice or orange juice. It's the equivalent of like three or four servings of green vegetables. Superfoods. I get that at Whole Foods. It's $20, $24. Lasts me the whole month. I put a scoop in. It has orange, red, purple, uh, green, yellow fruits and vegetables. It's the equivalent of three servings of fruits and vegetables. And I put that right in. They have different flavors. Um, when we do this talk at the office, we actually make it and give you a little taste. Um, so I buy the chocolate one. I put it in my protein shake. I'll talk about the protein shake in a minute. It doesn't fill you up, but it gives you all the, you know, all the greens and, and all of that. But what I do, well, I'll talk about this now. My protein. No, that's all right. Um, my protein. Like I have a shake in the morning uh, when I first get to the office, and I'll do this again in the afternoon uh, just to make sure I'm getting enough protein. Um, I buy almond milk. Love almond milk. Anybody drink a lot of dairy, a lot of milks and stuff like this? Okay. A lot of times we get, I was talking to someone the other day, they were talking about, well, how can I not drink milk? Because most people think you're going to get calcium and vitamin D from the milk. You're really not getting much calcium and vitamin D from milk. Okay. This is the thing. We make this enzyme called lactase. So we come out and our mom breastfeeds us. We're drinking her milk, we can break it down, we have the enzyme possible to do that. But after about the age of two or three, you stop producing that enzyme. Now you hear this lactose intolerant, things like that. You stop producing that enzyme. Why? Because after about the age of two or three, you're weaned off your mother. We're the only animal that then says, hmm, let's go to another animal and drink their mother's milk. Okay? A cat doesn't stop, you know, or, or a dog, they don't, you know, after they're done, uh, breastfeeding or whatever you call it for the animals, they don't go to another animal. But we do that. And then we pick the biggest animal possible, a cow, okay, <laughs> whose digestive system is very different than ours. Okay? So we drink their milk. Now, the vitamin D and the calcium, if you picture it, it's in this envelope. So you have to open the envelope in order to get at the vitamin D and the calcium. Now, the envelope is made up of casein. Now, if you've ever wallpapered your house, especially years ago, that thick paste, casein. Okay? Now the casein 
in cow's milk is about 300 times thicker than it is in human milk. So you have to break the bond. Oops, we don't have the enzyme to do that anymore though, because now we're older than three or two or three. So you can't effectively open that bond, that envelope, get the vitamin D and the calcium, and then utilize it. Besides the fact that we pasteurize and homogenize and heat it up and kill everything off in the milk. So the only one that really wants us to drink milk is the American Dairy Association. <laughs> But that's the reality of the milk. So you're not really getting vitamin D and calcium out of the milk the way you think you are. You know, what's written on the label isn't going in your body. So I get it from other sources. My kids have never had milk. Well, I shouldn't say that. They've had it and they're like, what is this? So they don't drink milk. Um, they, as far as dairy, some of the yogurts have a little bit of dairy. Um, that's really the only dairy. Uh, they'll have a little um, cheese, a little mozzarella sometime. Uh, uh, that's about all the cheese. Like we are. Kids have cereal every morning. Rice milk is what we use. We buy some soy chocolate milk, rice milk. It's, yeah, it's really good. Naturally sweetened. We buy vanilla. Okay, we buy vanilla just for the taste. If you drink plain, it's kind of like, mm. Vanilla is pretty good. They have chocolate. Now, I, for me, my kids don't like it, but I buy almond milk for me. The amount of fats and all is the rice milk. To me, it's just I love the taste of it. I started drinking it. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm hooked on it. That's what I buy. Okay, Because again, I'm not looking to get my... You get Pretty much you go out in the sun, you get enough vitamin D from the sun. There's a reflex. It goes to your eyes, tells your eyes, causes reflex in your body to create vitamin D anyway. You're getting a lot from the sun. Okay, that's why it's important to go out in the sun. But you're getting, see, years ago, I was going to talk about this later. Let me talk about this now. Vitamins, the RDA amount. Okay, we have the RDA amount of vitamins. That's the enough vitamin C to stop you from, or prevent you from getting scurvy. Enough vitamin A to prevent you from getting night blindness. Enough vitamin D to prevent you from getting rickets. So the RDA amounts were determined years ago. Okay, when we had to get vitamins from uh, other sources because the food wasn't fortified with it, we were, were depleting our soil, we weren't getting the vitamins and minerals that we needed, okay? The RDA amount. Then there's an amount called the ODA amount. It's not enough to prevent you from getting disease, it's enough to optimize your health, okay? And that's in this packet also. The ODA amount is the optimal daily amount, okay? So we're getting a lot of vitamins and minerals from the whole foods we eat and then we supplement it with things like vitamins and the food supplements that I mentioned. So my kids, they drink rice milk. That's all they'll drink. When they drink milk, cow's milk, my, my daughter uh, told the school that she's allergic to it because she doesn't like it. <laughs> so, but that's, that's what they drink. Again, I'm not worried about the vitamin, calcium, vitamin D and calcium from the milk because they're not getting it. If you ever talk to kids with allergies, okay, you ever drink milk and you feel like that film on your tongue and all that? It's because your body doesn't, can't absorb it properly. It's trying to get rid of it. That's why first thing I do when I take care of kids that have allergies, sinus problems, uh, ADD, take them off the dairy. It's amazing how much their physiology changes. Allergies start to decrease. The sinuses aren't as congested because it's very congested to your mucous membranes. Okay. Uh, within a few weeks, if you do it consistently. Yeah, if you just stay away from white foods, potatoes, rices, uh, white potatoes, um, not uh, sweet potatoes, white potatoes, the bread, the grains, all that kind of stuff, you see a huge change in allergies and uh, women, menstrual problems, things like that. It makes a big difference with that as well. See, we, you know, years, give you an example. We eat hamburgers. Okay, you eat a hamburger, the cow is grazing in the fields 100 years ago, right? From the grass, they get a lot of vitamin E, right? They're eating organic food. So we're eating that cow. We're eating that organic food the cow ate. But now, it costs too much to have these big fields. Better to keep them in a small area contained. So we need to feed them because they're not grazing on the grass. We'll feed them all the grains. Well, we make the grains. What do they have in it? Not much. It's fatten the cows up. So now we have to fortify the cows with vitamin D shots. See, our food is so depleted, if you eat organic food, you're getting a lot of those vitamins and minerals, the calcium, the vitamin D. 
You know, you eat live food, you're going to get life. That's why I don't worry about it. Because of the foods we eat. Okay? So, since I went off on the tangent of the vitamins, people ask me a lot of times about vitamins. Anybody take a vitamin? Multivitamin? Okay. I'm going to save you money. Okay? We buy multivitamins. Multivitamins come in a capsule or a tablet, right? You get one tablet or a capsule. Vitamins come in all different forms. There are fat-soluble vitamins, water-soluble vitamins. There are vitamins that work well together, vitamins that should not be together. Okay, some are synergistic, some are antagonistic. They don't work well together. So, centrums and all these vitamins, they do a lot of marketing. But when you take that vitamin and the vitamin D, the E, okay, the fat-soluble vitamins, you're not utilizing all that vitamin that's on the label because it's in one solid form and should be in, you ever take a vitamin E capsule by itself, it's in a little gel, it's fat soluble, should be in an oil. So the vitamin I get is from Trader Joe's. It's either nine or $11 a month. There are eight different tablets, capsules, okay? And it's Trader Joe's, their brand name vitamin. It's in a little container. Within that container, there are uh, 30 packets. Within the packets, there are eight vitamins, or eight capsules and, and that kind of thing. Because when you take the vitamin, you want the A, D, E, and K to be in some type of oil form. That's how your body's gonna use it better. You want the other vitamins in capsule or tablet. Okay. Now some of the vitamins should be packed together in the same form. Some of them should not. Okay. And when you take this vitamin, it's made and designed so you, you can utilize majority of what's on that label. There are always going to be some waste, but you're going to utilize it. And it's all based on the optimal daily allowance of the vitamins. And that's in the packet near the back. Um, it says vitamins and minerals. There's a little paragraph about that. Um, and I actually have the website on the bottom. Whenever I have information from a website, I always include the website so you can go to it and research it yourself as well. Um, so the ODA and the RDA amounts. Take this chart, take your multivitamin, and compare your multivitamin, the amount in the multivitamin, to these charts and see where your multivitamin is. can almost guarantee it's going to have the RDA amounts or close to that, but it won't be close to the ODA amounts. Because most people spend, you know, you can spend $30, $40 a month on a vitamin and you're really not getting out of that vitamin what you think you are. So I went off on like a whole bunch of tangents, stuff I was going to cover later, so now I'll have to backtrack, make sure I know where I am. Um, so, but does that answer your question with the, with the milk, okay? Soy milk, there's still a lot of um, debate on the soy milk, having too much soy milk. We buy about a half a gallon of the uh, chocolate soy milk. We go through that in about two weeks, family of five. So I'm not too concerned about that, but our products, um, you know, we don't buy a lot of soy products, uh, just because I'm not so sure at this point, you know, there's uh, research on like cancers and things like that, thyroid cancers, things like that. So we buy more of the rice milk. And like I said, I buy the almond milk. Um, so that's where we go with in terms of cereals and things like that. Now, when we buy our cereals, you'll see on this chart, why don't we go to this chart now? Um, the spreadsheet. Okay. The first page. Does anybody have any questions, by the way, anything I've covered up to this point, or any, anything that you have questions about that I haven't covered? Yes? That, yeah, and in fact, um, there's a website. I use the, um, the South Beach website, southbeach.com uh, website for the glycemic index. That's something you should be aware of, okay, for the glycemic index. But again, like diabetes and things like that, it starts by what you eat. So if you have a well-balanced diet and the food is coming from a healthy source, sugars are important. You need sugar. You need healthy sugars. Okay, that's the difference. So that's a good website to go to to take a look at the glycemic index of foods. And from there, you can determine, is this highly glycemic? Is it low glycemic? And then putting together a healthy diet. Once you put together a healthy diet, you don't have to worry too much about that because the sugar sources are going to be healthy. So my kids eat cereals. Okay. You'll see the first uh, item here is cheer or, uh, Cheerios. Okay. Now, a couple things. If you go to Costco, they have their brand. It's called Kirkland's. Okay. Um, Whole Foods has a brand. Their brand name is 365. So when you see that in the Whole Foods section, that's what that 365 is. Now, eating organic can be expensive. Eating very healthy can be expensive if you buy the brand name items of those health and organic foods. 
But if you know what brands to buy, it can be very cost effective. Cheerios, for example. You can buy Cheerios. It's going to have high fructose corn syrup in it. It's going to have preserves in it, okay, on and on. Now, if you want to buy a healthy version of Cheerios at Whole Foods, now we didn't take all of them, but we gave you three options. Three options right there, healthy forms of Cheerios. And all of them but one are less than Cheerios. At Ucrops and at Kroger, there are other brands as well. Okay, again... Anything we have as an alternative is healthy. Okay? Uh, that's their brand of Cheerios. Okay? So like Cinnamon Toasty Crunch Cheerios. Uh, a healthy version of that is Mom's Best or Barbara's Bakery or uh, Cascadian Farms. Does that make sense? Okay? So if you go down this list and like the waffles, one thing when you buy brand name waffles, look on the uh, ingredients. All the time they're going to have aluminum. Okay? In them. Yes. Preservative. Now, unless you eat the siding of your house, I wouldn't eat the waffle that has aluminum. <laughs> but that's something to watch. Okay? Like for me, I buy the uh, 365 brand of, um, it has blueberries in it. Okay? And it's $2.99, and it doesn't have the aluminum. It doesn't have preserves in it. Okay? Healthy version. So there's always an option for the brand name items that are healthy and cost effective. Okay? Yes? Hmm? Well, like for the uh, 365 oatmeal, that, that box, that's what I eat. It's rolled oats, you know, the regular rolled oats, but they're just in there and they, they have, some of them have a little flavoring. But again, the source of the flavoring is healthy. So for me, that's why and I also have the Quaker oats, you know, the one minute, you know, just oatmeal. Um, but those are healthy versions of oatmeal if you like the instant. Because a lot of people like it because, like I go to my mother-in-law, I shouldn't pick on them, right? But I'm already married, so they have me. They can't do anything else with me. But, um, you know, she gets the brown sugar um, uh, oatmeal. Yeah, maple brown sugar. And uh, it's funny, when I go to their house, I'll cut it and, you know, pour the packet out and I take this big glob and I throw it down the drain and they look at me and they're like, what are you doing? But I mean, there's so much sugar in it. You know, I, I put fruit in my oatmeal, so I'm getting a lot of sugar, natural sugar, you know. So for the taste though, you know, I do buy some of these and it's fine because of the, the uh, ingredients. Okay. Nature Promise, well again, that's a brand name, healthy version. So it's a good product. So, like Cascadian Farms, that's going to be a little more expensive. Once you get into the brand name organic or healthy items, it may be a little more expensive. If you go to Target, Walmart, um, uh, some of these stores that carry some, a lot of organic products now, they're going to be a little bit more in some of those stores because they don't buy them in bulk. You know, if you go to Whole Foods, that's all they carry. In fact, I, I'm just I'm comprising a letter now to... Uh, the, uh, the president of Whole Foods because they had uh, Cheerios in there in their aisle. I, I asked the manager, I called the manager, I said, well, why do they have Cheerios here? He goes, well, the demand. I said, yeah, but you're, it, it goes against your whole mission. But anyway, but a lot of the stores that carry just small amounts, it may be a little bit more. But if you go to uh, like a Trader Joe's or um, you know, Whole Foods, I don't know much about Martin's because I haven't been in too much, but uh, you know, Ucrops used to have a nice section there as well. Um, and you can buy very cost effectively, healthy, and a lot of times organic if that's what you want to buy items. Um, so as you go down this list, you'll see, uh, and this is just a number of different food items. Um, there, you know, my kids, people say, oh my gosh, your kids must be like, you know, deprived. When we buy chewing gum, I buy the Whole Foods. It's flavored with cane sugar. Um, they want to have gummy bears, buy gummy bears at Whole Foods. You can buy Twizzlers at Whole Foods. You can buy healthy potato chips. You can buy uh, anything you can, lollipops, okay? Lollipops, healthy lollipops. Doesn't have flavoring and coloring agents in those. So my kids, a lot of times when they eat the name brand items, they're like, oh, daddy, this doesn't taste good because they've developed a taste for natural foods and natural sugars. 
And when it's man-made stuff, they're like, they're trying to make it taste like it should taste from nature, and you can't do it. So they're like, oh my gosh, this doesn't taste good, Daddy. Good, you know, <laughs> I don't have to lecture you, right? So any item that you want, you know, like for the kids and all, you can get it naturally. They have a whole, whole row of all the, you know, my kids, we buy uh, the cheese puffs, like the Cheetos. We buy Tings, which is like a, I don't know what it is, but it's like a bag of like, you know, snack bag and things like that. And those are some of the things that I put in their lunch. I forget who, you, I think, yeah, that's some of the things I put in their little lunch box there. Um, you know, we want cheese and crackers. They have healthy cheese and crackers. You want the little goldfish. You get the goldfish. Doesn't have the coloring agents. Doesn't have all the other stuff in it. So my kids, they have all this stuff. We eat all this stuff, but the healthy version of it. So for me, it's very simple. When I buy my meats, I do buy organic meats. I choose buffalo meat instead of ground beef just because I like the taste. But you get healthy organic ground beef. Um, whole foods, luncheon meat. You like luncheon meats. Sometimes my kids will eat uh, luncheon meats for, for uh, lunch. Doesn't have any preservatives in it. It's all low sodium. So when you buy the luncheon meat there, you eat it in a week or else it gets that slimy feel to it because it doesn't last long. To me, I'm okay with it. If I have to throw out a little bit, it's okay because I know I'm giving my kids a healthier choice. You know, when my mother and father-in-law, dad, they always bring food. I don't know what the deal is, but they bring food all the time. And, uh, but it can last months. I'm exaggerating a little bit. But there's a reason for that. You know, it's got so much stuff, it can last a long time. You, know, you put an apple out, it's going to go bad in a short period of time. Because that apple comes from the ground, you cut it away from its life source, it's meant to go bad. But if you put preserves in it, it'll last longer. But it's not meant to. So again, creating a healthy environment. That's the way I look at food. Food for me is an energy source. You know, I guess my reference point is different than a lot of people because of my schooling and when we worked on cadavers I saw what was on the inside of people. I saw what colon cancer looked like. You know, I saw what liver cancer looked like. Lung cancer. You know, I saw what carotid arteries look like when they're saturated with stuff. So for me I have a different you know, my wife and I talk about this. She goes, Oh, you know, you're so passionate about it, but you have to understand people haven't seen that. You know, you can't just walk around with a cadaver and say, Look, this is what it looks like <laughs> you know. So my reference point is different. So for me I have a pretty strong anchor to eat healthy. I figure if we're designed for 120 years, I want to be here for my kids' kids. I want to be active. You know, I remember my grandfather, they used to sit him in a chair on the driveway and we used to play. And he used to look. And look. He wasn't living life with us. You know, he was like on the periphery. But I want to be in the game. That's why I eat the way I eat. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, I'm Italian, I'm from New Jersey, so once a week we have to have pizza. It's kind of part of rite of passage as you, you know, live. Right? So, I go to known as pizza. Uh, there's probably a good chance of not buying organic cheese and organic dough. It's okay, you know, because that's not the, the bulk of my diet. I go out to eat, and I'm going to eat what they have. I go to somebody's house, I'm going to eat what they have. I don't get caught up in it. I don't, oh, I'm not going to eat this, I'm not going to eat that, because I know the rest of my diet is healthy. You know, so I don't let it consume me. I don't let it dictate, oh, can't go here, can't go there. But the reality is I can control a lot of it. And what I can control, I'm going to make the best choices I can. Because I know if I eat a bowl of Twinkies, that's what my cells and tissues are made out of. If I eat a bowl of apples, that's what my cells and tissues are made out of. And I give my, chance a better, I give my body a better chance of being healthy if I make healthier choices. I always tell people, don't worry about what you eat. Just buy healthy foods. Then whatever you eat in your house is going to be healthy. So... I went off on a lot of tangents, so I want to make sure I didn't miss anything because I know our time is coming to an end. Um, there is something in here I didn't talk about, cleaning the food. Um, there's a section in the front about, and it's right after determining your calories. When to buy organic. S some fruits and vegetables, you don't have to buy organic. Everyone thinks right away, just buy everything organic. If it has a thin outer layer, like an apple, a pear, strawberries, berries, that, if you're going to do this, that's the choice, that's the time when you would want to uh, buy organic. The great thing is, you go to Whole Foods, the organic fruits, the strawberries right now, same price as the regular ones. The blueberries, same price as the regular ones. I buy organic lettuce. It's, I think, 50 cents more than the regular lettuce. It's not going to break the bank, and I know I'm making a better choice. So this, you know, if you have uh, pineapples, uh, watermelons, 
honeydews, things like that. You don't have to buy organic because anything they spray with isn't going to penetrate. Okay, so this is a good little indicator. This comes from Dr. Oz's website. Okay, um, and then cleaning the fruits and vegetables. There's a page here on cleaning the fruits and vegetables. You know, what I do to make it simple, um, I go to the grocery store, I come back as I'm taking everything out of the bags, the first thing I take out of the fruit. I put it in the bowl, I put water in the bowl, I put a little baking soda, a little lemon juice, and I let it sit there while I'm taking everything out. I have a couple bowls with all the fruits and stuff like that. Then, you know, the stuff that I don't have to cut up. Then what I do is after I'm done putting everything away, I go to those bowls, I rinse them off, cut up the fruit, put it in the, gar in the container, and I'm done. I don't have to worry about washing it every time. Put all the apples in, all the pear, everything. It's done. Usually I skin it anyway because the kids, it's easier for them to eat. I'm sorry? It may turn, well, the apples I don't cut up right away. Like I'll cut those up as we use them. You know, um, now the question always arises, well, when you cut it up, you denature it, you're going to lose some of the vitamins and minerals. You do. But it's easier for me to do that and, you know, then sit there and cut it up every day. How much am I going to lose? Probably not that much, but it's a better choice for me to cut it up and eat it rather than not eat it. Because if it's more difficult, I can't do it. I have three kids tugging on my legs and pulling me in directions, so I have to make it easy and effective and uh, cost effective. Okay. But that's what we do with our lettuce, the same thing. Take our lettuce off, we clean it off, we put it in a big container. Put it in the fridge, so it's easy for me to make a salad. I just have to grab it and put it in a bowl. These are things that are very simple. They don't take a lot of time. I do it on Saturday or Sunday, and it doesn't take a lot of time. So, any other questions? On Greek yogurt? Greek yogurt is very good for you. You have to acquire a taste for some of the Greek yogurt. What is the Greek yogurt that you found that's good? I'm going to put you on the spot, I know. Yeah, was that, uh, was that organic? or? Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's... Um, Greek yogurt is very good, though. You know. No, read the label and see what's in there. See how they make it. Right. Three ingredients, but again, where do the ingredients come from? Like, for example, if the dairy comes from a cow that's, you know, being pumped up with steroids and all that, that will be in your yogurt. So, like, when I buy the uh, Whole Foods brand of yogurt, it's a, you know, it has dairy in it. It's not the organic one. Um, was it like, I think it's 59 cents a thing of yogurt or something like that. I think I think that's what it is. But it's not the organic one. But I know Whole Foods. The cows that they use to make the yogurt are not, you know, inundated with uh, all that stuff. They don't have any, they, they've never been uh, given uh, hormones and things like that. So for, now Dannon, I don't know. I would probably guarantee that it does, you know. So, but again, the price difference is nominal, if any, but it's a better choice. So, you know, what I always recommend is start off slow, you know, because it can be overwhelming. Um, this uh, spreadsheet is a good thing to use as a shopping list because you know chances are you're going to buy something off of this list and um, it's a good way to start and you say okay let me just shop for a few things this week that I don't don't normally buy and once you start buying healthier foods you'll find that they taste different they taste better you know when you buy an Eglin's best egg or a natural organic egg and you crack it open it's gonna be a vibrant yellow you buy a, another egg and you crack it open, it's going to be a brownish yellow. There's a difference, a life that's different from those eggs. It's amazing. And especially your kids, you do not have to sell them on eating healthy. You do not. Because that's, they have to acquire a taste for the sweets. They don't have to acquire a taste for an apple or a banana or an orange. So, any questions? Does this help create a healthy diet? Yes. Yeah, then they're good eggs. I have a patient who has a farm. He's like, uh, you know, you're probably not crazy about me eating ham and things like that. I said, no, ham's not bad because it comes from the, I don't know, pig or hog. I don't know what you would call hog. I'm from New Jersey. We do. <laughs> the hog or whatever it is in your backyard. And everything he has is raised organically, naturally. So, you know, eating, eating you know, ham sandwich isn't bad if it comes from a good source. I was talking to a fellow, we went out to lunch, and he said, uh, you know, he doesn't eat chicken. I had a chicken salad, he had a um, uh, salmon salad. He goes, oh, no, I wouldn't eat the chicken. I said, why? 
He goes, well, you know, I process with all this stuff. And I said, well, do you think that salmon came from a natural source? Probably came from a farm somewhere, and it's inundated with all this stuff. You know, I was at the restaurant. Now, when I'm home, I don't worry about it. But, you know, people look at certain foods, I think, because it swims, it's healthier. You know, um, I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but, you know, like this fellow, it, it comes from a good source. You look at the source. Because you're eating everything that, that food source ate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the wild salmon is better. But my example was like at the restaurant, it's probably not wild salmon. Yeah, I, uh, I almost guarantee it. Yeah. So, any questions? Okay, does this put you at ease from last time? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, we buy um, uh, <laughs> we we buy uh, soy ice cream. Sometimes we'll buy tofu ice cream. Um, <laughs> I know, I know that. We, um, yeah, we buy tofu pups. We buy the tofu pups that are the hot dogs. We'll buy um, uh, there's. Um, in fact, I didn't even know this, but I go to Whole Foods and I buy the. Um, it's called Tao's vegan chicken. I didn't even know it was vegan chicken. I was uh, Tao's chicken. And it's like a, um, what do you call that uh, sauce? Anyway, um, it has a, um, I can't think of the sauce. But anyway, they, they, um, that's tofu. Uh, it was actually tofu. No, no, that's right. So the ice cream, yeah. If you go to uh, like Whole Foods, ice cream, the pops, the ice cream sandwiches. My kids eat the ice cream sandwiches. They're tofu. They don't even know they're not eating ice cream because it tastes like it. So, but we go to Bev's and eat ice cream, you know, yeah. But but again, it's what what is the the bulk of our diet consist of? And yeah, you can taste a little difference when you go to Bev's and when you buy the ice cream. But when you've been doing it long enough, they don't know the difference, you know. So you can buy the turkey bacon. You know, there are healthy choices all over. Better eat the regular ice cream than the low-fat ice cream. In fact, the low-fat ice cream, because they take the fat out, they have to put so much more in to make it taste better. And you're actually getting more fat calories from the low-fat, low-fat yogurt, low-fat ice cream, because of what's in the, you know, if you read the ingredients, when those ingredients are broken down, a lot of times it turns the fat. Yeah. Yeah, when they have to add stuff, um, what? Oh, yeah, no sugar. Yeah. When you see that, no sugar, no fat calories, no this, no that, you have to think, all right, that's kind of sneaky. What are they putting in to make it taste better? You know, but it's good marketing, and they do that for a reason. Yeah, Splenda, Aspartame, we talked about a lot of that last time. Um, so, yeah, better to eat the whole, like a yogurt. If you're going to eat yogurt, eat the regular yogurt. Don't eat the fat-free yogurt. You're actually getting less fat in that yogurt, and it'll taste better. Well, I appreciate your time. Hopefully this eased your mind from last time because I know you were like, oh my gosh, what do we eat? If anyone has any questions, let me know. We have a little pass on, or a little gift card on your uh, packets there. If anyone is interested in coming in the office for a health evaluation, um, talk about nutrition, exercise, chiropractic, how it can help with different health items, uh, health concerns that you may have, certainly we make that available to you and your families. And uh, we'll be back, I guess, soon. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, just real quick, I want to let everybody know I'll go ahead and email you a link to the um, charts that Dr. Albanese was talking about as far as the acidity and the alkaline. Um, I do have that, so I will get that out to you. And I hope you'll be able to join us for our next session, which is December 7th on stress. So right around the time as the holidays are going, uh, that'll be a good topic. So please join us then and, and tell people you know, what you've learned, and hopefully we can get more people out here. So thank you.